This is the Life Enthusiast Online Radio and TV Network, restoring vitality to you and the planet. I'm your co-host, Scott Patton, and joining us as usual is the health coach at Life Enthusiast, Martin Patella. We have a very, very disrupting episode today. I want to warn you that if you are easily triggered by people smiling at you or giving you innocuous advice that you ask for, uh, that's like pablum and doesn't really have any taste or any charge to it, then please turn it off now because we are going to be delving deeply into the emotional reasons for the massive amount of unwell people in North America in particular. And we're going to be delving into the emotional morass that causes people to just flip out over the littlest thing and cause huge, huge damage to their body. So without uh, any further ado, let's welcome our uh, life coach, our health coach, Martin Patella. How are you doing today, Martin? Hi, Scott. Martin here. And um, yes, I, I, on a good day, I'm a health coach. And on a bad day, I have to be a life coach. Because I tell you, there is stuff that comes through the phone and through the Skype and through the Facebook at me that just has me shaking my head in disbelief. Thank God I have all the training that I've taken. I mean, just so you get the picture. I am trained in neurolinguistic programming. I'm trained in clinical hypnotherapy. And I'm trained in modes of communication as a sales professional, as a health professional, and as a high achieving human. So I can actually access the tools that help me manage my TV, the transformational vocabulary, the stuff that I say to myself in my head in response to whatever's happening outside that my five senses bring me. Now, I believe that you have done a good amount of that work yourself, right? That's true. I spent years and years and years between meditation, uh, on physical courses where, you know, the weekends, retreats, uh, going to therapy, <laughs> EFT, uh, all to get my subconscious and my conscious mind aligned. Because if those two parts of your mind are not congruent, if they're not working together, then life uh, doesn't work very well in my experience with most people. And so despite my trying my best in my communications with my clients and even some of my relatives, I find myself being a trigger to people. They will, I, I'll tell you a short story. About 20 years ago, I was in a lineup at a trade show and up comes a guy whom I didn't even remember, like vaguely remembered. I knew that I had done some business with him. I used to work in the computer field. And uh, anyway, he was coming up and he was visibly agitated and somehow angry. And I looked at him and says, you look like you want to punch me in the face. He says, I do. I hate you. You're the most miserable awful person that I've ever known. And I thought, well, thank you for sharing. I barely remember your name. Who are you? Uh, well, I have a trigger story too that I want to share now that you've shared yours. I was uh, living with this gal about 18, 15, 18 years ago. And so she was with me pretty much all day, every day. And so when I'm answering the phone, she would be hearing me on the phone. If I was doing something, she was there. So she's like someone that knows me very, very well. And her best friend calls on a Saturday morning. And it's just kind of like, you know, we're just sort of hanging out. That's the time the phone rings. So I pick it up and I go, uh, you know, this is Scott. How may I direct your call? And it's just like a joke, right? And she says, well, can I speak to blah, blah, blah. And I said, sure. And I hand the phone. And she rips a strip off of my poor girlfriend at the time, goes up one side, goes down the other side, just rah, rah, rah. And finally, when she can get a word in edgewise, my girlfriend says, Scott never answers the phone like that. He was just sort of goofing off. He didn't know it was you. Like we didn't have call display. He didn't know anything. So this friend of, of my ex-girlfriend was a person who installed 
phone systems in large companies and then train them on how to answer the phone, how to use the phone. And she hated, how may I direct your call with a passion? And as soon as she heard that, she just blew up for no reason, right? Yeah. So that's one of the things that seems to be happening a lot. We have road rage on the, on the, on the highways. We have kids going into schools with guns and shooting. We have people bombing churches and mosques. Uh, we've got a lot of overreaction happening in our world these days. Yeah, I remember being at one of the um, uh, seminar kind of lecture things that uh, Wayne Dyer was a speaker. And, uh, and he put a question in and he said, when you squeeze an orange, what comes out of it? And the logical answer is orange juice. And he says, well, why is that? And the logical answer is, well, it's full of orange juice. So just remember, when you squeeze a person, whatever comes out of them, that's what they're full of. Ooh, that's a good one, Martin. I'm going to remember that. <laughs> Indeed. And so, so whatever comes out of a person is what they are filled with. And so... Um, I would say that now I understand better the balance of the autonomic nervous system, which has two branches, the sympathetic and parasympathetic. And the sympathetic is the uh, fight or flight, also known as piss and vinegar. And the other one, the parasympathetic, which is the rest, repair and digest, which should be probably known as um, uh, honey and snooze. So one type of person when they get triggered is either going to be yelling and screaming at you or they're going to just going to be going away. Yeah. Well, one is attacking and the other one is yielding. Mm. Like if you could imagine yourself who's your primary alkaline, primary parasympathetic, when somebody comes at you, your first response isn't to punch back. Your right. response is to uh, ask a question or just question the situation. What happened? Right. 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 Whereas a, an acidic person, person in this um, sympathetic state of mind, if somebody barks at them, they'll bark back even harder. Right. So that's that's the physiological side of things. That's 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 how it happens and why it happens. And I guess you and I will have more sympathy for people who are in these uh, states that are less than constructive. And yet, we want to illustrate, right? Let's just get into that. Yeah, um, we, have a, we have a group uh, that we started a few years ago dealing with fibromyalgia, and we have over 65,000 members. So as you can imagine, these are all people that are pretty, pretty much in pain all the time. And uh, uh, not that that's funny. It's not funny at all. But to expect them to have much of a sense of humor about anything is, is not really realistic. And um, the other thing is, is that they get triggered by very small things. And one of the things that they do when they get triggered is report a post or a comment. And then somebody has to go in and, you know, be like Solomon and decide is that's, it's okay post or it's not an okay post and, and either accept it or delete it. And uh, yeah. we had an occasion where someone made a, what I would say was a fairly innocuous comment on a post and it got reported. Yeah, let me just show what that looks like to the admin on the Facebook group that, that we have been babysitting. So it looks something like, uh, it looks something like this. So what we should be seeing is uh, Scott asking people to be a little more considerate. Like, why are you reporting a post that is actually suggesting something positive? So just to, uh, just to read it, it says, push through it. I guess that's what, put, what most people just read the first three words and they're either triggered or they aren't. So I think that's what triggered this person. Get up once an hour for whatever reason, stretch even even if it is sore, you're young, it's, if it's your arms, move your arms more. Don't let this FM win, which to me was, you know, I, mostly the time what we expect to be reported is, you're up, blah, 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 you know. Uh, 
uh, or, you know, or, you know, buy my MLM or something along those lines. And right. to have this was just, and because we have 65,000 members, just imagine if 10% of them reported something every week, that's, you know, 6,000 reports that we've got to go through. Now that doesn't happen. Fortunately, it's less than that, but it's still something that uh, you can get out of control. And we just want, I just wanted to say, you know, this is what we're seeing. And, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, you know, if a bunch of, you know, if the first 25 people post say, yeah, Scott, like this is really offensive. You should, you know, it should be off. I would be, you know, rethinking it. I'd ask Martin and the, the doctors who we have in charge, you know, if I really am, you know, out to lunch and then we would remove it. But uh, it, it, that was not the case. <laughs> there was a lot of people who were just like, I don't know why this person removed it. And what's funny is the person that reported it, I scratched their name out so nobody could see it. The person who commented never said, as far as I know, never, well, certainly has never contacted me. And I didn't notice, not that I read all the comments, never noticed her or him saying anything. And the biggest blow up actually came from the original poster who this has, you know, very little to do. I and mean, she didn't complain about <laughs> thinking that this was a, you know, should be banned and, and uh, taken away. She was complaining because her name was in the image. Well, actually, this poor thing ended up being, I uh, ended up feeling horrible for some reason and was reporting that uh, we were being insensitive and that uh, we were uh, ignoring her needs. Uh, I mean, her conclusion after a few hours was that she is feeling unsafe in this space. Yeah, and this whole post has nothing to do with her. So it's, it's amazing how she makes it about herself and how she works herself up into such a state that she doesn't get any sleep for a day she feels worse and everything else. And, and this, is the, this is the part that I wanted us to make sure that we were talking about, Martin, is you, you get a stimulation, uh, stimulated by something, and then you turn it into such a huge, huge event. And if you're doing this constantly, what impact is that going to have on the physical health of your body? Yeah. This actually reminds me of an interview with, we did with Ashok Gupta, um, who was explaining how fibromyalgia works. He was explaining that it's the misprogramming of the amygdala, the center in the brain, whose job it is to interpret inputs. And amygdala gets misprogrammed, and it's interpreting minor inputs and pre presenting them as if they were major. And by minor input, I mean I stub my toe, it hurts, but I know it's over and it's going to heal. A major input would be... Um, I got shot. Well, no, I'm being chased by a predator, right? And this is not going away. It's sustained until I reach safety, until I completely change my environment, until I end up somewhere in a safe room. I am not safe. And so, the interpretation of the misprogrammed amygdala is that it will take an initial input that stops and it just stays on. It's like a doorbell that you press once and it just stays on ringing full time. So just to take this back to kind of an emotional thing, if you're a parent and your child spills a glass of milk, <clears throat> then what we normally do is say, you know, Susie or Johnny, you know, be more careful, don't spill the milk. And then you get a cloth and you clean it up and then you finish lunch and you go whatever on with your day. But what you're talking about is the child spills the milk and all you talk about for the rest of the day and the rest of the week is, and all, <laughs> is about this spilt milk and how you shouldn't spill the milk. And not only that, you're constantly wiping down the table, even though now all the spilt milk is gone. Yeah, I was actually seeing it even more radical is that in, in an inappropriate response is that the child spills the milk and you choose to um, beat him up for it. And then you continue to beat him up for it every day for the next year. Every day. Just beatings will continue until your attitude improves. So in your subconscious mind and in your, I guess, your conscious mind too, 
if you're getting triggered by something and you're not letting it go and it's spiraling and spiraling, if you're emotionally beating yourself up for days and days and days and weeks and weeks and weeks and years and years and years, then is it any wonder that, to me, my body is where my subconscious is, your body starts breaking down because you're just constantly hammering at something and your body's going, oh, I don't know what to do with this and I'm going to have a sore shoulder and I'm going to have a sore hip and I'm going to have a sore back and sore neck and everything else and until all of a sudden you're in pain forever. Right. And so this is, again, the problem of the autonomic nervous system. If you're in the uh, sympathetic side, it's fight or flight. No concern for repairs. We're just saving our lives, lives collectively and individually, no matter what. And it's an emergency. So yeah, you're saying you're in a state of emergency. Right. As opposed to the other side, the sympathetic, uh, pardon me, parasympathetic, where the rest repair and digest dwells. Only then the repairs happen. Only then your oxidative stress will diminish. Only then the frayed nerves can start repairing. Only then. So as long as you stay in the triggered state of mind, you do not repair. You just continue to make things worse. So you're kind of, let's talk about a car, because we all know about a car, right? So you're driving your car, and the oil light comes on. You've got to change your oil. The engine light comes on. You've got to change something else. Your tires don't have any air in them anymore, so you're basically riding on your rims. Uh, fortunately, you've got enough gas, or you're going downhill, so you run out of gas, doesn't matter. The car will continue to roll down the hill. And uh, you're wondering why there's smoke coming out, things aren't working very good, your eyes are itchy from the smoke, when in fact what you've done is you haven't stopped the vehicle in a place where there's a mechanic who can put air in the tires, can fix the engine, can put oil in the, in the uh, oil pan, can uh, make sure everything is running right well. So when we take it to the mechanic, the mechanic doesn't run the car while he's fixing the car. It actually stops and he's able to go in. So it's resting. That's my point. Yeah, and to further extend your metaphor is this. The warning light is there to warn you early on to stop and fix it before major damage ensues. So if you carry on, I mean, in the tire metaphor, if you continue driving on a flat tire, you wreck the rim. If you continue driving the engine with the temperature too high, you will cook it and you'll blow the head gasket. And instead of a $50 bill, you're going to deal with a $5,000 bill. So that's, that's the issue of, of this uh, healing. You need to sleep every day. And you need to meditate every day to, to sleep. And you need to figure out what the triggers are and then untrigger yourself. So let me try and list a few of the ways how you can untrigger yourself. There are minerals that will help you shift out of the fight or flight into the rest and repair. Number one tool is magnesium. We can take it orally, but that causes bowel flush, so we can take it topically, which means you can spray it on, rub it on, soak it on. You can get into a bathtub with magnesium crystals and enjoy a relaxation that starts by you switching out of the fight or flight into the rest and repair. So that's using minerals. You can do that using foods. Depending which body type you are, you could be either using carbohydrates or fats. That We need to introduce the fact that there are two main types of people. You need to know which one you are and you need to use the appropriate piece of nutrition to calm yourself down. So just to jump in here, Martin, in case you were kind of wondering, let me just make it, give an example. There are two people. One eats a, a jam sandwich and they both eat a jam sandwich. One goes and lays on the couch and sleeps for two hours. The other one's running up and down the walls. So these are, they eat the same thing and one makes one person tired and sleepy and the other one hypes them up. So when you notice when you eat something, you know, an hour or two later, are you, you know, ready to have a nap or are you just super hyper? 
then you start understanding the impact that different foods have on you. And we all know what we eat has a huge impact on our behavior. If you don't believe me, go to a bar and watch what happens when people drink certain liquids and get into bar fights. So uh, right. that's basically what we're talking about. I happen to be the type of person that if I have a uh, slice of bread with jam or something, so not, not a fat, but a sugar, uh, I can be I guaranteed I'll be sleeping on the couch for two hours, like right out of it. Like it just puts me right to sleep because that's that's my, uh, I'm a parasympathetic or something like that, right? Yeah, you're, you're autonomic dominant. If you were an oxidizer, it would just rev you right up and uh, put you into, I want to go to town and pick a fight. <laughs> right. So there are tools. We just mentioned the two easiest tools, the magnesium that will take you out of the sympathetic into parasympathetic and understanding your metabolic type and using the appropriate food to disengage you. The other thing that we have readily available is CBD. CBD from the uh, hemp plant is very good at modulating whatever extreme you're on. If you're depressed, it will get you out of that. If you're anxious, it will get you out of that. It's just bringing you out of extremes closer to the center. Right. So pretty much everybody should be taking some good CBD oil. <laughs> These days, yes, pretty much everybody should have it in their purse, in their stash, in their wherever they are and take it. But watch this. We have the hemp oil available in glycerin and we have it available in hemp oil because for some people, the glycerin is the antidote, right? Glycerin is the uh, quick carbohydrate, whereas the hemp oil is the quick fat. So that's why it's available in these two forms to, to match your personality. So we don't pull in opposite directions. So I want to jump in with one other thing, and that is if, you're, if you've got health problems and you're watching a lot of TV, turn off the TV because the TV is all about increasing stress. If you're watching some sort of drama and you get pulled into the drama, your body doesn't know that's a fictional thing happening. It's acting as if it's actually happening. You see people yelling at each other or whatever. You're watching the news and you see people getting bombed. Like uh, if you're having all this stress in your life, don't compound it by thinking that I'm just going to lay on the couch and just veg and watch TV. You're not vegging and watching TV. You're continuing to compound the stress in your body. Right. Or you can teach yourself the mental ability to be an observer without being engaged. Be in the world, but not of it. Or maybe I'm saying it backwards, but the point of that is that you can be in front of any sensory input and you can allow it to trigger you into an emotional state or not. The response yeah. is a choice. It always is a choice. The statement, he made me do it, is the ultimate excuse and total nonsense. Well, you have a choice to make a choice or you have a choice to not make a choice. And make, not making a choice is a choice. So, Well, that too. I know, Scott, what I mean is you have a choice in how you respond. You have right. a choice of either get upset because somebody said something or not. So if you don't have the uh, mental discipline to read stuff on Facebook and get triggered by it, don't do it. Like people who get triggered and spun out of control by reading other people's comments about something have no business reading these comments. It's like children playing with matches. I don't know. Am I simplifying too much? No. Uh, so we did uh, add a post to the group about the uh, emotional impact of our thoughts, our subconscious and conscious thoughts on the body. It was a video by Dr. Bruce Lipkin. And uh, it was interesting because the first comment that I read was basically, 
I go to work, I do this, I do that. I just don't have time. And I thought, well, you have time to uh, be on Facebook and I'm sure you have time to watch TV, but you don't have time to work on things that will help you get over whatever health issues that you've got. Or certainly, like I love what you always say, Mark, you know, when you have a problem, stop. The first thing you do is stop digging the hole. So I'm in, I'm in pain, I'm sick, I'm whatever I'm doing. The first thing you should do is like stop doing the things that make you worse. I know that I can't work in the afternoon when I have a peanut butter and jam sandwich or a jam sandwich uh, because I sleep for four hours. What should I do, Martin? Right. Don't eat the sandwich, Scott. Right. right. And it may be obvious to people, out, you know, what's, what's, we can't see ourselves, right? So what's obvious to other people around you may be totally, you may be totally oblivious. I'm totally oblivious to a lot of things. And then people tell me and I go, really? I didn't know. And they're like, how could you not know? You do it all the time sort of thing, right? Um, so that's why it's really important to have people around you that you trust and who are willing to take a chance, right? If you're the sort of person that when someone tells you they don't like your blouse, or you don't like your shirt, you yell and scream at them, then when you come to them and say, you know, I have this problem, what do you think? They're going to say, I don't know, because all they know is that whenever they say anything you don't like, you get, they get yelled and screamed at. So you have to be able to build trust in your associates and your circle so that they can tell you the truth that you don't want to hear. And that's another thing that I've noticed with people who have low self-esteem or have been in pain a lot is they don't want to hear it, right? Yeah. There, there's a famous saying again, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Oftentimes the teacher is coming to us in a very strange costume. It's coming in the costume of an irritant. It's trying to teach you a lesson. You are ready for the lesson, but you're not getting it. So this lesson will be repeated until you eventually get it. Which oh, yeah. it can be very sad because <clears throat> I have I have had a few lessons repeated to me, things that I have been slow at learning. And um, I tell you, it's not fun. Well, I'm sure you know it well too, Scott. Yes. And, and anyway, the point I want to make here is that if you find yourself in a place that's triggering you, please go inward immediately and think, it's me who's causing the reaction. The reaction is on the inside. It's between these two temples. It's where the amygdala is. Actually, it's right underneath there. And it's triggering me. And time to shut it off. So if you're into politics and would like to discuss whether this or that is the right choice, make sure that you're not one of those people who cannot detach from the outcome. Because it may turn out that during the election, you're going to be on the losing side. How are you going to live for the next period, whatever that is? Yeah, it's it, really when you look at politics, you look at religion, you look at sports, it's all about them versus us or, or taking sides. And you really, it's fine to talk about it all, but it's not fine to get so worked out that you can't get to sleep till four in the morning because you're so upset because your brother, or your cousin, your mom or your dad or your kids or whatever are taking some side opposing you uh, in, in any part of life, right? It's just kind of like it's just, there's no negative or positive attachment to most activities people do. It's our interpretation to, that causes the emotional uh, situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as long as you're constantly going from one emotional drama-filled situation to another, and you're not taking time out to meditate. This is one of the reasons why yoga and meditation have become so popular. It's like it forces people to actually stop for an hour or an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And the health benefits of just that stopping are so huge that you know more and more people, as they realize it, that they go to do that, right? And 
if you think, well, I don't know how to meditate or whatever, I don't know how, or I, don't, I can't or whatever, then you need to put yourself in a situation that supports movement towards that, which is, you know, go to a class or get a CD or a DVD and put it in and, and start making those changes. Even a walk in the, in the forest to near, or park nearby would be huge. Leave your phone at home. I would like to uh, plug in something really important. I have been listening to uh, Dr. Zach Bush for some time, and he has been doing awesome research into how the uh, industrial agriculture is contributing to the changes in societal health. I mean, he's got phenomenal grasp of the, st the statistics and how things are progressing over time starting with 1996 when glyphosate was introduced into the environment we have been gradually progressively at an accelerating rate getting worse and he says leaky gut equals leaky brain and leaky brain and other leaky tissues are creating this emotional instability wow. the reason we see more of this is because we are actually um um, more vulnerable because of the environment and the number one tool that we have to help us deal with it is humic acid either in the form of powder or the concentrate doesn't matter as long as we supplement that it helps greatly to protect the vulnerable part of the digestive system the single cell cellophane like layer of protection that we have that protects the vulnerable inside from the hostile outside and the humic acid helps the microbes that live there to properly maintain this barrier so when we supplement that we create the ability and po potential in our body to actually cope with the toxic onslaught of the poisoned foods and poisoned environment that we are now living in it's, it's not that uh, you have any chance of escaping it. It's everywhere. These days, glyphosate is found now to be in water. The, the point is, it's water soluble. It has gone from the plants where it was applied, it has gone into the water table, into the aquifer, into the creeks, but it also has evaporated and gone into the air. So these days, even the organic field is being rained on the glyphosate the stuff that makes your gut leak and the stuff that makes your being more vulnerable to the production or to the dysfunction in the production of your neurotransmitters your serotonin and your dopamine are produced by the microbes in your digestive system so when that is less than harmonious or less than functional you're going to experience mental illness symptoms even though you would normally not be mentally ill but because both the that the neurotransmitters are not being produced in sufficient quantity you will have these symptoms now you run with that scott yeah what do we do? Well, right? Depressing thought, but I, I had the image when you were talking of we were like fish in the aquarium, and the guy forgot to turn on the water cleaner, and uh, yes. you know, it's it's not uh, it's not good. Right, but it's important to understand we're not blaming anyone, but we have been able to identify the tools that can help us to get out of this, and we have been able to identify the triggers that are the primary movers. This message, whatever it is, whether you heard it on TV or whether you read it on Facebook or whether your spouse or your child or whatever said something, if you're feeling triggered, it's because you're out of balance. And bringing you back into balance is possible. We have the tools and uh, we have gone through them in this talk. Just remember this message. If you're being triggered, it's because you're out of balance. And the yeah, in other words, it's not a normal behavior, right? Like, no, it's not a normal response. It's, a mature, 
healthy human being will not be up till four in the morning because somebody said, I can't believe you ate a donut today. Someone who's out of balance and ill and um, toxic is going to be thinking about that all, you know, all night and turning themselves into knots and furious and yelling and screaming and all the rest of it. That's not normal behavior. And I think we just need to, you know, get everyone to acknowledge that and understand that and then say, okay, how that is a symptom of a problem that I have. What can I do? to fix it. Right. And it's important to note that the, uh, the OCD, obsessive and compulsive behavior, when we get a thought into our heads and then start spinning that thought out of control, whether it's worrying about a negative outcome or, or whatever irritant, that itself produces more of the stress hormones. So it's a self-feeding loop that needs to be consciously broken. Like if you allow it, it can spin out and just push out over top. Like you, you can have a, I don't know what you'd call it, a terminal event, just blow up if you don't take control of it. Yeah. And I think it's also important, this may be the last point before we just we wrap it up is to understand the relationship between your conscious mind and your subconscious mind. And the video that I posted on uh, from Dr. Lipton was really interesting because he basically said the subconscious mind is a million times stronger than the conscious mind. So you can be consciously thinking, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it. But if your subconscious mind is not on board, it's just not going to happen. Right? So that's one of the reasons why we need help. This is where the habits are in our subconscious mind. And, uh, you know, we're very habitual people and we need to be able to have help to work through whatever the issues are to be able to break those bad habits that are causing the downward spiral and put, them, put in place habits that are going to cause an upward spiral. Mm -hmm. Yeah, elsewhere on Life Enthusiast and also on the group that we, where we picked up this event, we have posted about techniques that are available to deal with the subconscious versus conscious conflicts, the uh, EFT, um, emotional freedom technique, tapping, is one of the tools. We have also discussed and interviewed people about uh, neurolinguistic programming and rapid pain elimination, and we've talked about the amygdala reprogramming. All of these are available. They can be handled. Right, so Martin, any last uh, words before we sign off? If you want to take it out on me, my phone number is 1-866-543-3388. I have the training to um, cope with almost any inputs. I and invite if, to have you come and yell at me to your heart's content. And if you want to take it out on me, call the same number and talk to Martin. And I'm at uh, Life dash enthusiast.com and we are restoring vitality to you and to the planet see you next time everybody bye bye <laughs>